Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 19th of May and a pretty quick update this week. So always, I have the chapters, so you can jump to the update you care about. New videos this week. I created a video all about the new cold storage tier that's available for Azure Storage. But really in this video, I go beyond that. I really talk about the logic behind all of the different tiers and when I would think about using them, how I balance the capacity and the interactions with the objects to help pick the right tier. And then we did have our 200,000 subscriber ask me anything, which was a huge amount of fun. So if you wanna go back, you can see that. And yes, I do have a new screen. I treated myself to celebrate the 200,000 subscriber milestone. There's some issues with it. I'm not totally happy. I think I actually think I prefer the old one, but hey, nothing's perfect. Okay, on to what's new. So on the computer side, we now have this Azure Container Storage in Preview, which is focused around, well, I have my Azure Kubernetes service environment, and if I have stateful workloads, well, I need somewhere to write that stateful data. I need some kind of persistent volume that my pods can make a persistent volume claim against. And in the past, I had to deal with whatever that backend was, be it a disk, an Azure Files, an Azure NetApp Files. So what Azure Container Storage does is it takes away a lot of that complexity from having to manage all of those backends. It's a managed solution that is backed by uh, the Azure Elastic SAN, which gives me that iSCSI connectivity. Azure Disk, which would be very good for databases like MySQL or Postgres, or even the ephemeral disk, which would be good if there was some, hey, the pods themselves were doing replication to other pods, so it wouldn't matter if that content was lost. And it's derived from the Open EBS solution, which is open source, and it's all about providing container storage for Kubernetes. So I'm gonna create a storage pool backed by that elastic sand, that disk, that ephemeral disk, and then everything else is really managed for me. The connections will be that NVMe um, over fabric, in this case, over the network, if it's disk or ephemeral, or iSCSI, if it's that elastic sand, because that's what elastic sand supports. So it's really gonna help me when I have those stateful AKS workloads, and I don't wanna now have to manage at large scale all of that backend storage, and it's gonna simplify all of that backend. And if you think about Elastic SAN, well, Elastic SAN has that dynamic sharing of storage. It opens up a huge number of possibilities. Now, it is Linux-based nodes today. Um, it may change in the future. And then virtual machine scale sets max surge. So if I think about the time I do rolling updates, ordinarily what's gonna happen is it will take a certain number of those, it will take them down rebuild them with the updated and bring them back in. So I see a drop in capacity of my scale set during that rolling upgrade. So what Max Surge does, it actually adds brand new ones. So it's gonna add brand new VMs based on whatever that new configuration is. And then once they're healthy, it will roll into the scale set and delete the other ones. So I won't see a drop in my capacity. Now, it does do checks. Hey, do I have quota? Is there capacity available? before it's gonna go and do these things. The only downside I see with this is, obviously during that maintenance scenario, it's creating some extra VMs, because it's creating these new ones, getting them healthy, and then replacing them. So it may cost me a few extra dollars, depending on the minutes you have that overlap of the old and the new. So if I have a really big VM scale set with hundreds, it may cost me a few extra dollars, but I think there's huge benefit here that I'm not seeing that drop in capacity while it's doing that. So that's now in preview as well. On the networking side, so policy analytics for Azure Firewall has gone GA. Now obviously Azure Firewall configurations may be constantly being updated. You have different administrators putting in their rules and over time that configuration can grow and grow. Maybe some of the rules are not even being used anymore but it starts to bloat, it could affect the performance. So this policy analytics will address that challenge. What it's gonna let me do is give me visibility into all of the flows through my Azure Firewall. I can look at well, which rules are actually being used the most. What is the hit rule rate? Um, I can look at a single rule and see what's being done. So now I can go and understand, well, maybe what's not being used anymore. Help me optimize the rules in my environment to get it as optimal as possible. Get rid of that waste that's really not providing any benefit anymore. 
Azure App Gateway v2 web application firewall config to policy migration. So the regional web application firewall, i.e. the web application firewall that I attach to an Azure App Gateway instead of the global web application firewall that I put on front door. So for this regional one, we now have a seamless migration experience to move from configuration to policy. Remember, policy is the newer state. Policy has support for newer managed rule sets, has support for custom rules, uh, per rule exclusions, it has bot protection rules, it has higher scale, I can use across multiple gateways, listeners, URL paths, it has all the latest features. So I want to get to policy from configuration. Well now, it, it's a simple upgrade. I need to be running App Gateway WAF v2, and if I am, I can then just see an option to say upgrade from WAF configuration and it will move it to policy. So that's highly recommended. And then virtual WAN routing intent has gone GA. So remember virtual WAN provides that managed hub. It's a managed hub network, it can be in multiple regions and hey, I have configured to my site site VPN, my express routes, connections and peers to all my different virtual networks. And what I can do is I can deploy inside there, that inside the virtual WANs hub network, Azure Firewall, I can deploy certain next generation network virtual appliances, even integrate with certain SaaS solutions that provides that firewall type functionality. And what routing intent lets me do is for internet based or private network based, so I have a configuration for each, I can now configure a bump in the wire next hop to the Azure Firewall, to that next gen NVA. So it can go and inspect the traffic. And because it's a bump in the wire, the traffic routing will then continue on its way once it goes to that hop. It's gonna pass through that appliance, get scanned, and then just carry on. So this is a really powerful ability now for traffic evac going out to the internet and or on the private networking space to have that bump in the wire next top via Azure Firewall or that next gen NVA. Again, it has to be deployed into the VWAN hub network that's gonna give me those capabilities. So this is a really nice capability. On the storage side, so Azure NetApp Files, remember that Azure hosted uh, NetApp Filer solution, now has standard network features edit. And really what this means is, if I had the basic networking configured on a volume, I can now upgrade to standard network features. I don't have to recreate it. And obviously the standard network features gives me a higher IP limits, network security group on that delegated subnet. I have user-defined routes. I can use fast pass support with express route. There's a bunch of other things. But now I can take my existing volumes that were using the basic and move them to standard, which is really what I want to be on. On the miscellaneous side, Azure Backup and now supports confidential virtual machines with customer managed key. So there was already a preview for platform managed key, i.e. Microsoft managed, but now, hey, it's a private preview, I'd have to go and sign up for this, but if I'm managing my own key in my key vault, uh, I can still go and protect those with Azure Backup, being a confidential VM. Azure Backup Reports now has wider support. There's now reports for things like uh, Azure Database for PostgreSQL, for blobs, for disks. And really what it's doing here, it's doing logging of the backup related metadata and then retaining it for some configurable amount of time. And then it uses that retained metadata to run built-in reporting against. So it lets me check, hey, am I adhering to the policies I have regarding backup and retention? Um, how much backup storage am I using? What's the status of my backup jobs, my restore jobs? Uh, I can even configure custom alerts. So this is a really nice capability with now even more solutions um, supported with it. Azure Monitor for SAP solution has gone GA, and this is really end-to-end -end monitoring of an SAP running in Azure. So that's the health of the overall solution but then the ability to deep dive into any particular availability or performance issue on some component. And once again, I can alert on certain metrics of those. <laughs> so I need to switch to Azure AD authentication for App Insights, streaming and query. And there's two different dates. So what basically this is saying is the old way of using an API 
key to basically authenticate to App Insights, that's being retired. And so I need to move to the Azure AD based authentication. So the streaming was about the streaming of live metrics to App Insights. So I need to get off of the API key for streaming by end of September, 2025. And then for the querying of data, I need to get off of using the API key and onto Azure AD by the end of March, 2026. So two different dates for two different pieces of functionality. Azure Advisor now has this workbook template related to reliability. And it's all about trying to help me. So Azure Advisor is fantastic. Azure Advisor is all about, hey, let's jump over, giving me some help. Giving me help about, well, my cost optimization, my security, my operational excellence, my performance, but we're really focused on reliability. And if I go to workbooks, we have this new reliability workbook. And so if you go and open this up, what it's now gonna let me do is dive in at, I could do multiple subscriptions, I could pick specific resource groups, I could drill down into things with certain tags, and then go and get help and insight into the different areas of my resources, be it compute, containers, database, networking, storage. You see all these great things here, but it's gonna help me go and dive in and get more specific information about all of these different things. So this is a really nice just solution to go and help me. And then finally, uh, Azure Site Recovery updates um, in GA, and it's really all about the mobility service. So they've added support for additional Linux operating systems. So for Azure to Azure, so hey, I've got a VM in Azure and I'm replicating it to maybe a different zone or a different region, uh, Oracle Linux 8.7, uh, RHEL 9, Cent OS 9. And then for VMware or physical to Azure, that same Oracle Linux 8.7, RHEL 9, Cent OS 9. So those are the changes there. And that was it. Um, I hope as always that was useful. Until next video, take care.